wait, I guess. Oh no. <clears throat> Hi, reflect upon, uh, reflect on God's word. Can you hear me okay? <laughs> I go, you know, it's funny because I, I go live and then I forget about my microphone. I, <laughs> yes, I am well. Oh, great. Great. So <laughs> here I am again, and it's great to see you back. I, I just thought maybe I would wait a couple minutes until a couple more people show up. But um, yes, I um, just recently in, in another chat, um, this verse, Psalm 22, 6 has come up and people were actually questioning on uh, the worm. And I know I, I researched it back a while ago, and um, it's quite intriguing on, on the actual meaning of it. And uh, one of it, I think it was his fourth, the fourth saying of Christ on the cross. It's kind of, it, it's, it's a bit of a mystery, but, but the more you dig deeper, um, <clears throat> you can see that there is actually a, a quite uh, an extraordinary meaning to it. <laughs> yeah and I just I, I have to show my Chicago t-shirt from oh, Migsfield in Chicago <laughs> I said I would wear it tonight so I am <clears throat> I still have it from years ago it still fits too <laughs> that's a good thing <laughs> hmm. so is there anything um you want to say before I get started? Because I think I'll just get started and, and uh, see um, who pops in as we go. <clears throat> so I wrote uh, some things down. I I just watched a very good UK sitcom on BMO. A lot of, I'm going to put pop you up here. Yeah. I don't watch too much TV anymore. Um, the news, <clears throat> um, weather, stuff like that. I, I just find that it's so, I don't know what it's like in the UK. I know what it's like in Italy. <laughs> they actually have all the commercials um, sort of grouped together, which is really nice because you can watch your show. <clears throat> Not that I understand it, mind you, but uh, anyway, it's good that they have internet over there. I I was there, oh, I don't know, maybe about five years ago uh, to visit my family, visit my mother's hometown, my father's hometown. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I stayed with my aunt and my uncle there. So, and everybody you meet was a cousin. Here's your cousin. <laughs> Who's not my cousin. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do is actually just get started, <clears throat> and if other people pop in, that's awesome, but if not, they could always watch this later. So, yeah, Psalm, Psalm 22. Um, before I get into that, though, um, I would like to talk about the seven sayings on uh, the cross, the, the seven sayings uh, that Christ had, uh, had voiced when he was on the cross. Um, it actually, it actually paints <clears throat> a picture of, of God's divine plan for Israel. Actually, I think I'll put it down here. It's better with the glasses. Um, so let's briefly take a look at all seven, but I would really like to focus on, on the fourth one, um, which was recorded actually in Matthew 24, 46, and as well as Mark, uh, 15, 34. Um, 
So you know what? I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop up this. The uh, I'm going to try and screen share. Um, share screen, and I, I'm going to pop up the blue letter here so that we can take a look. <clears throat> And if I go back here, yes, I, I figured out how to shrink myself <laughs> so that you can you can watch me while I do this. But but you know what? If I if I do that, I can't. I find it hard to see uh, what I'm doing. So I just want to see that it's screen sharing, and I will go back to uh, the blue letter here. So what I would like to do is uh, first look at the like I said the seven. The seven sayings and the first one is in Luke uh, 23 34 23 34 and actually these all have um, oh I, I I don't like to do this to you guys but it just I just find it um, hard um the first saying was, then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his remnant and cast lots. Now, this, this actually relates um, to Christ as well as to Israel. When Christ was on the cross, he was still trying to show Israel and, and believers who he was. So by saying this, this relates actually to forgiveness. I don't want to get too deep into these. I just kind of want to highlight them and, and move on. Um, but if you can recall, this, this first one is uh, forgiveness. And the other one is Luke 23, 43. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today... Shall that be, shall thou be with me in paradise? And this is the thief, <clears throat> excuse me, on the cross. And, <clears throat> excuse me, what this relates, what Christ was trying to say, it is, um, this relates to salvation. So believing who Christ was, his by him saying this on the cross, on the cross, it is, uh, it's, it relates to salvation. Not only to believers, like I say, but um, to Israel as well. And the third one is in John 19. Uh, 26 to 27. You know what? I'm going to try something. Nope, that's not going to work. <laughs> oh, no. How do I get back? Oh. Dear. Uh oh. There. <laughs> I hope. It, okay. John 19, 26, 27. So I'm sorry. Excuse me. I'm going to have to scroll down here. <clears throat> when Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciple standing by whom he loved, which would be John, he said unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. The woman is always Israel, so there is a deeper meaning to this one as well. Then saith he to the disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that hour that disciple took her unto his home, his own home. And this relates actually to relationship. So the first one was forgiveness, the second was salvation, and the third is relationship. There is a pattern to this. And the one that I would like to um, concentrate on is Matthew twenty seven forty six, which is this fourth one. Yeah, sorry, I know that's it's annoying there, but oh, what did I say? Matthew forty six. Yes. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabach tathanai. That is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to continue on um, all of, all, 
uh, with all seven, but this is the one that I would like to concentrate on. And this one relates to abandonment. And a lot of people think that Christ, um, that God abandoned Christ. But did they, but did he really? Christ was actually fulfilling prophecy and God was um, well pleased with his son. So it's not an abandonment of God to Christ. Actually, because all the sayings on the cross relate to Israel, it's God abandoning Israel. But first, Israel abandoned God. Therefore, um, God abandoned Israel. And what's interesting is, is the next one, which is in John 19, uh, 28. John 1928. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished. <clears throat> so if you look at that, he knew that um, everything was accomplished in his earthly ministry, that the scripture might be fulfilled. And then he saith, I thirst. Now, keeping in mind how these relate to Israel, it's Israel that is thirsting right now. They are thirsting for, for truth, for water. And water, we know as Christians, is the word of God. So now they are actually in distress um, of their abandonment um, because of the lack of knowledge or the lack of understanding. Um, and then John, um, it's 1930, so that's not too far down here. When Jesus, therefore, had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. <clears throat> so this, as relating to Israel, is actually still future for Israel. And this, this actually relates to the triumph. It's, it's triumph of the cross. So when he said it was finished, his earthly ministry and what he has done um, in the flesh has been completed. And giving up the ghost is is a triumph. Um, that's that's defeating Satan. That's he fulfilled the scriptures, and and God was well pleased with him. So there's no reason why Christ was abandoned. And the next one um, I have down here is Luke twenty three forty six. So we'll go to Luke twenty three. I'm trying to go slow for you. <laughs> uh, 46. Yes. And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And having thus said, he gave up the ghost. So he gave up, he gave up the ghost. And actually this saying, um, actually this saying, it relates to reunion. Um, so Christ and God are now reunited. And if we go back, I'm going to do this quickly. Um, and I'm going to stop screen sharing for a, a minute so that you can see me. Uh, where am I? Here I am. <laughs> if we look back at the verses that I had um, um, put up here, the first one relates to forgiveness. And, and it all relates. It all relates to Israel, and it's still it's Christ still on the cross trying to tell Israel who he is. The first one relates to forgiveness. Um, the second saying relates to the salvation. And the third one relates to relationship. And the fourth is abandonment. The fifth is distress. The sixth is triumph. And the seventh is reunion. So as you can see that there is a progressive reason for these sayings on the cross and Christ um, saying what he said. So 
Yes. What else did I have here? I, I had I have to write this down or <laughs> I forget. Okay, so in short, putting them all together, Christ, even on the cross, was trying to show Israel, yes, who he was in the past and us. And um, because scripture is for our learning, there's no reason why we can't take the sayings of Christ and and um, reflect them upon ourselves and our salvation as well. Um, yes. So with that, where am I going to go here? Um Yeah, by accepting his work on the cross and taking in his word, um, the result is our, our own reunion, yes, being reunited, not only for believers, but for Israel, yes. So I said that already. <laughs> okay, so you know what? I think I'm going to stop sharing this and um, maybe move on to some comments here and see who's in chat. Um, clicked upon the word, and it wasn't. Yes, and I'm going to look into this one a, a lot deeper um, because uh, be, because what he said on the cross, the abandonment, a lot of people think that it's God abandoning Christ, but it's not. Um, what Christ was doing was remembering, recalling, and he was quoting um, scripture that was written well over a thousand years ago before he was even crucified so and there's a reason for that <laughs> oh is it in a job as well okay how much less man how much less man that is a worm and the son of man which is a worm yes and this actually in the book of Job, this, um, correct me if I'm wrong, anybody, but this this is um, how much less man. He became man, but he put himself lower actually than even even the animals, not all creatures, because he, he quoted himself as being a worm. But it's a very special worm. Um, it's interesting. Jesus never refers to Mary as mother in scriptures, but woman. Quite interesting. Yes. Yes, because in scripture he said, who is my mother, right? The woman, the more I read, the more I study, uh, it resembles Israel. So, hello everybody. Greetings. Hi, Jared. <laughs> How are you, Sir Jared? Nice to see you here. Okay, peace, grace, and yes, Jared is uh, actually from the Netherlands. So, and he's six hours in the future. So he should be, he should know what I want to say. <laughs> mm. And Rio, hi to all watching here quietly. Very interesting. Wash hands. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. So I think what I'm going to do is get get into what I, I wanted to get into. So, um, um, so yeah, so the saying, um, I don't remember where it was now, Matthew 27, 46. So I'm going to screen share again. And I am going to take you to back to Matthew, uh, my mind, it's a good thing. You know what, people, a dull pencil is better than a sharp mind sometimes because there's a lot of scripture here. <clears throat> so, so, oops, 2, 7, and 46. Yes. This one again. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, uh, which is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Now, like I said, a lot of people think that it's because he is saying that God is forsaking him, but I don't understand how that could be. Like I said, God is well pleased with him. 
So who is he forsaking? He is forsaking the nation Israel right now. The Israel's put on hold. So um, I'm going to continue reading actually this, uh, this. And this is a Psalm of David. And it's David's... Um, King David was having issues. You know, it's funny, the story of King David. When when David was fighting for God, he was always triumphant. But then he had issues with his ego, and I think he abandoned God. And then he was wondering why God abandoned him. Um, because he was winning his battles, and then all of a sudden he was he was not. So I'm just going to continue here. Oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but thou hearest not. And in the night season, I am not silent. But thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the uh, praises of Israel. Our fathers trusted in thee, they trusted, and thou didst deliver them. So when, when they trust, they become delivered. They cried unto thee and were delivered. They trusted in thee and were not confounded. So there's there's the trust in God. Okay, this is the verse, but I am a worm and no man, a reproach of men and despised of the people. They that see me laugh, um, they that see me laugh me to scorn. They shoot out the lip, they shake the head saying he trusted in the lord that he would deliver him let him deliver him seeing he delighted in him see this is about about david and his relationship with god and and israel is kind of like the um uh the fallout um collateral damage <laughs> is what i should say but thou art he that took me out of the womb that didst make me hope when I was upon my mother's breasts. This is important um, in regards to the worm. Um, just so re remember that. Keep that in your mind. I was cast upon thee from the womb. Thou art my God from my mother's belly. Be not for me, for trouble is near, for there is none to help. Many bulls have come past me strong bulls of bashan have beset me round they gaped upon me with their mouths and as a rave and oops as a raving and roaring lying lion so i'm going to come back to this one here um i am a worm and no man a reproach of men and despised of my people now i'm going to share a different screen here and um i hope it's i hope it's sharing it's not is it so i think what i'll do is i will stop the screen and i will share it with you another one um I'm sorry, I just want to see it, that it is sharing good. Okay. Yes, this is the one I, would, I wanted to take you to. So, um, this is an article, and it's, it's written by um, Sherry, uh, Sharai, Sherry Abbott, Reasons for Hope from Jesus, and this was written in March 14th. So, not that long ago. So when I did a little bit more research on this, um, I think people are starting to understand what's actually happening here. So I'm going to bring you down here. Psalm 22 is known as one of the three shepherd psalms. Um, this psalm is also prophetic because it gives a picture of the cross from the perspective of, of our Good Shepherd, the Lord Jesus Christ. In great detail, this psalm describes the suffering and death of our Lord Jesus that would take place a thousand years after the psalm was, uh, was penned by David. 
Yeah, I, I agree. On the cross, Jesus quoted Psalm oops, 22 when he cried out. And was Jesus forsaken by his father? Um, you know what? I'm going to leave that up to you, but I do not think so. So, <laughs> like I said, I think it all relates to David forsaking in that psalm and and um, and Israel as well. And for those standing at the foot of the cross, his words should have evoked the words of the psalm in their minds. Had they remembered David's words, they could have seen and understood what was happening before their eyes, and they could have remembered the promise of hope in this psalm's closing words. So I'm going to continue reading. And you know what? I'm going to leave these links um, down in the description too when I'm when I'm finished. This this is uh, referred to in Jewish um, her hermanet as a remez and there are quite a lot of hidden remezes if that's a word um, with a deeper meaning in scripture and there are there are more and like I said there's there are links below the um, this article as well and there is an interesting remez in Psalm 20 um, 22 6 this psalm is prophetic prophetic of the cross of Jesus and in verse 6, it says, But I am a worm and no man. Jesus was certainly a man on the cross. So what did the psalmist mean when he wrote, But I am a worm? So the worm in, uh, the worm in Psalm 22.6, the common Hebrew word for worm is Ramah. And it is defined as a maggot or a worm. However, in Psalm 22, Six, the word for worm is tola or tolat. Strong's dictionary defines this word as a maggot, um, the crimson grub. It's a crimson grub, but used only um, in this connection of the color from it and the clothes dyed wherein crimson scarlet worm, the clothes covered in it, even the high priest's. Um, and in the tabernacle, um, they colored their garments. So the word tola in, in the psalm uh, denotes own, uh, not only a worm, but it also identifies it as a crimson or scarlet worm that is common to the Middle East and predominant, uh, predominantly in Israel. It should be noted that the colors crimson and scarlet are very deep blackish red, which is the color of blood. And in this crimson word, I'm sorry, and in this crimson, crimson worm, we find a hidden, hidden meaning of biblical significance. I lost my cursor here. Now, let's look at the life, so the life cycle of this crimson worm, and it's very, very interesting. The crimson worm, um, a coccus ilius, ilicis, or anyway, I'm not saying that, looks more like a grub than a worm. In the life cycle of this worm is where the remez is found, and it points to the work of Jesus on the cross. Okay, when the female crimson worm is ready to lay her eggs, which happens only once, in her life, she climbs up a tree or fence, uh, wood, and attaches herself to it. Picture of Christ. With her body attached to the, it should say wood there, a hard crimson shell forms. It is a shell so hard and so secured to the wood that it can only be removed by tearing apart the body which would kill the worm, a picture of, of Christ. The female worm lays her eggs under her body, under the protective shell. When the larvae hatch, they remain under the mother, mother's protective shell so the baby worms can feed on the living body of the mother worm for three days. <laughs> which is quite interesting. Um, so 
if I can, if I can go back, I just want to make sure that I, I um, save my spot here. You know what? I think I'll just finish this paragraph. After three days, the mother worm dies, and her body excretes a crimson or scarlet dye that stains the wood to which she is attached, and also her baby worms. So not only does the mother leave a stain on the wood, she stains the babies as well, who are feeding off of her body, feeding off of her body, just just like the Last Supper, when Christ said, this is my body. Um, ah, wow. Do you know what? I don't know where that was. Was it in Matthew? The Last Supper? Anyway, I'm going to take you there. The baby worms remain crimson colored for their entire lives. So once <clears throat> that mother worm dies and feeds off of the mother for three days, the baby worms remain crimson and it's colored for their entire lives. No different than Christ atoning us and we have the blood of Christ on us for the rest of our lives. Therefore, they are identified as crimson worms. They are identified. Interesting. Yes, I know. <laughs> I thought it was interesting as well. So I think what I'm going to do is, uh, I just want to make sure that I'm sharing the proper screen. Um, so I'm going to stop that screen. And hi, Cliff. How are you? <laughs> I want to get to some. I want to get to some comments here. I just, I just want to. Oh, I want to make sure that I'm screen sharing. That's that's the problem here. I get off track, and then, and then things don't happen. So Chrome tab. I want to take you back to where were. Oh yeah, I was going to take you to Matthew. Um. Twenty-six. I think that's where the Last Supper is. That's what I have written down. Anyway, I can't. I can't keep this all in my head. I just. I just can't. I have to write it all down. Um, so Matthew twenty-six, twenty-six. Yes. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to his disciples and said, "Take, eat. This is my." body. So just like the crimson worm, their chil it, the worm's children, the babies feed off the mother's body for three days, which I found um, quite interesting. And also, because of that, they are, they are stained blood, and they are, they are identified they are identified as as being Christ's. That's what identifies them as the crimson worm, which I find isn't that amazing. <laughs> oh, <clears throat> it's poppy up here. Yeah, it's very neat. I don't know. If, is it an insect or is it? A, I think it's more of a worm grub. Can they be categorized as an insect? I'm not sure. <laughs> Excuse me here for a second. Mm. Yes, I found that I just found that very interesting. And not not only the uh, protective shell. I mean, we're protected under the blood as well. Um, I should go back to my notes here. Um, otherwise, I I don't want to skip anything. Um, yeah, it, it the protective shell. It it's also a protection. The, the blood of Christ protects us from. sin like it, it it's cleansed us actually <laughs> I'm take that off now and uh yes protection um the feeding for three days which i find amazing and this only happens once once in that in that life cycle the the mother worm so as you can see th this is um it is quite amazing uh, does anybody know of any um, 
scriptures of identity in there's there's quite a few i have i have galatians 3 27 29 romans 1 8 uh, romans 8 14 15 and second corinthians 5 17 which gives us our identification in christ so i can actually go and pop that up so i think i still have my blue letter up here and i think i do oh that's not what i wanted to do this is what i want actually i'm going to go back here and i'm going to hide this for other people to uh, see so identification um the first one i have here is uh oh, which one do i have which one do i want to go to i think romans 8. i i like romans I love Romans. Romans 8, um, 14, 15. Just because I don't have to scroll down so far. <laughs> I don't mind scrolling, but it, I know on screen sometimes um, it can be annoying. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Yes, sons, babies, yes. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Um, oh, go away. See fewer notifications. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Here we go. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, that's what happens when you go live. I am going to go to Galatians 3, 27.9. Um, because it was the first one. Uh, Galatians. It's the first one that I had written down. So um, which one went? 327. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. And that's the baptism, uh, the baptism of the blood, which covered the crimson worms, which identified them as crimson worms. They became crimson worms, and they will be crimson worms until their life cycle ends, which is uh, fascinating. There is shelter. There, sorry, there is neither Jew or Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus, and and not not one of those baby worms um, were were lost. Anyway, they were all covered in in the blood. It's um, and if ye be Christ's, then ye are Abraham's seed and heirs according to his promise. And what I was getting to was identification. So um, I'm going to take you back to, where do I want to go? Um, jeepers. I think I'm going to regroup here and I'm going to remove this and just regroup a bit because I, I, I'm not sure where I want to go right here. <laughs> um. Oh, yes, yes, hold oh, yeah, that, there's more. Um, Psalm 22, 14. I'm going to have to screen share again. Um, so I'll add that to the stream. I go back to Psalms, because this story isn't over yet. Psalms 22, and honestly, I forget where I left off. Uh, 22, oh yeah, Gap 14. Yes, this is another interesting one. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of my joint. So that's, yeah, anyway, I had a moment, sorry. <laughs> a loving moment. My heart is like wax. It is melted in the dust of my bowels. So wax is is very important, and his heart is like wax. I am going to take you back to where I was, so I am going to remove this, and I'm going to share again the where I was in the article. 
Oopsie. Oh, am I sharing? Mm. What happened? Oh, well, sorry, I skipped a step. <clears throat> okay, I should be, yeah, that's it. I should be screen sharing now. Um, where did I leave off? Yes, the identification, right? Jumping back and forth screens here. On day four, the tail of the mother worm pulls up into her head, forming a heart. A heart-shaped body that is no longer crimson, but is turned into snow, white wax that looks like a patch of wool on a tree or fence. It then begins to flake off and drop to the ground, looking like snow. Remarkable. And in Isaiah 118, Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet. <laughs> That's the root of the tolot. They shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. That is amazing. So I'm going to continue with this article because um, I'm going to go back, actually. I just hope I'm screen sharing. Good, 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 good. Okay. The, the body of the Tola. In biblical times, the red dye extracted from the crimson worm was used in high priest's robe and, prob and probably for red dye used for ram skin, skins to create the covering of the tabernacle in the wilderness. Uses of this red dye continue today. The worm's body and shell, while still red and attached to the tree, are scraped off and used to make what is called royal red dye. The waxy material is used to make high-quality shellac. It's a preservative. We are preserved in the blood of Christ, which is used in the Middle East as a wood preserver. And the remains, get this, the remains of the crimson worm are also used in medicines that help in regulating the human heart. So it's also a healer. Uh -huh. Very, very connected to Christ. So the typology, absolutely it is. Yes. So as the mother worm attaches herself to the tree or fence, Jesus put himself on a wood on a wooden cross, a type of tree, and Jesus willingly allowed the nails to be driven into his hands. However, it wasn't the nails that held him on the cross. It was his desire to fulfill the purpose and the plan of God the Father to redeem man from sin. So for him to say, why have you abandon me. I. It's not God abandoning name Christ. It's. It's. He was quoting the Psalm of David. Just as the mother worm attached herself to a tree, is a part of God's design for the worm's life cycle. So I've shown you this. So also it was God's plan, His design, to send His Son to be attached to a tree, a wooden cross, to die. Just like the worm. There are scriptures here, but like I said, I'm going to um, leave this. And if you guys want to look into it a little further, I encourage you to do so. Just as the mother worm, when crushed, excretes a crimson scarlet dye that both covers the baby worms and stains or marks them, Jesus was also bruised or crushed for our iniquities. His Scourgings and the nails were driven into his hands and feet, brought forth his crimson scarlet blood that both washes away our sin, our sins, and marks us as his own, which the crimson worm did to her babies. Just as the baby worm is dependent on the mother worm 
for the crimson dye to give it life and to mark it. A repentant sinner must depend on the blood of Jesus for the, forgive for the forgiveness of sins, to receive new life, and to be marked as his own. So, but I am a worm, and no man a reproach of men, and despised of the people. Yes, um, I don't think I'm going to read this uh, little quote here. Um, <clears throat> Jesus became poor, and in typology, having the sins of the world upon himself, Jesus became like a worm, like a lowly crimson worm hanging on a tree. And I think you brought up Job 25, 6, right? What's Isaiah 41 for to reveal a typology? Let's take a peek at this. Fear not, thou worm Jacob, and ye men of Israel, I will help thee, saith the Lord, and thy Redeemer the Holy One of Israel. Fear not, thou worm, Jacob. So God is telling I actually Jacob not to fear the worm, because uh, I will help thee, saith the Lord, and thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. Huh. Interesting. So nature does declare the glory of God. Um, as far as the high priest is concerned, I, I'd like to take you, you know what, maybe I'm just, I'm going to pop myself back up here again, and I want to go through chat and see what other people are, are saying. Uh, I have to go up <clears throat> all the way, so let's see. Um. Greetings. Um, this is very interesting. I've never thought of it like that. Amen. Yes, this is what happens when you dig deeper. <laughs> I get so curious sometimes. And yes, just the word worm um, can take you so many places in Scripture. It's It's amazing. Yeah. And you got a thumbs up. <laughs> uh, so here we have Psalm 69.21. Okay. Um, Psalm They gave me also gall for meat, and in my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink. Yes, when he was in thirst, um, the only thing that can quench you is the water. And see, it, it's funny. The more I read scripture, I don't. I see this in a three-dimensional state now. They gave me also gall for meat, which is not good. And in my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink. So it's putrid, right? Um, it's not pure. And I think Israel is just in a state of uh, unbelief. Um, that's that's how I'm taking it. And that's what they gave them. They're not... I could look into this a little deeper, I guess. <clears throat> it's their distress. They're in distress. Look at that. Reflect upon God's word has a friend in the Netherlands too. Oh, I, I think I did that one already. <clears throat> the prophecies of Jesus were um, fulfilled. Just amazing stuff. God shows the prophets the future events of Christ. Absolutely amazing. Yes, and Christ brought it full circle. Um, Christ brought it full circle. It is finished. Okay, Jared, let's see. First mention the, of the word worm, tolium, in Exodus 16. Taking, talking about gathering manna. Yes. 
in another word, the Lord Jesus Christ is our is our Sabbath. Um, you, you know what else? In Exodus um, sixteen twenty, Jared, uh, um, God said not to leave any man behind. And when he left, and when Israel, because God wanted Israel to trust Him for their next meal the next day, and because they held manna back, that was a lack of faith. That's like vinegar, right? It's a lack of faith. It wasn't. It wasn't pure. Um, <laughs> I'm segueing. What I'm trying to say is, they did not trust God enough to give them manna for the next day. They were hoarding it, and God sent the worm in to destroy the manna, and um, because of their lack of trust. So I, I I think it was the same word if I'm not same worm if I'm not mistaken, you know what we can go there if you like um, Exodus sixteen twenty and we can actually look it up. Breadworms. So if we go to two, oops. Okay, that works. Um, it's someone left till morning and it breadworms. Yes. That's they were leaving it. They were not supposed to leave it because that showed a lack of trust um from Israel to God. That's how I take that. Scarlet, yes, it was the same crimson worm. It's the same worm. Right. Yeah, it's the same worm. Amazing. Um, let's see. I don't know where I'm going to... Wait, I was doing... <laughs> I get sidetrack easy. I was showing... Um, let me see. Let's, let's do this. There we go. You can still see the scripture there. Here talks about Israel. Israel... Uh, Israel is, as you say, on hold, and it seems to them that God have forsaken them. Absolutely, because Israel first um, forsook, forsook God. So, and they are they are on hold. And if you and if you go back to the um, the seven sayings on the cross, um, I'm going to have to backtrack here. The last um, relates to distress so number five number six and number seven that he said uh relates it relates to distress and right now israel is in distress um and his sixth saying in john 1930 relates to triumph um it is finished and the third one relates um to um in my spirit uh, into thy hands i commend my spirit um relates to reunion but they're in distress right now. Right now, they're still they're still stuck. They're stuck in distress and abandonment. Right. So from from the sayings um, of being the worm, Christ trying to show Israel who they are, they can defeat their distress, but they still have to go through the tribulation, distress as far as today and tribulation, and then they will have their triumph, and then they will have their union or reunion. So it's yeah, it's quite interesting. Um, you know what? I have I'm gonna stop sharing this one and I am going to share um oops, what did I do? No okay, I think I got it back. I am going to share uh with you what it looks like. That is the crimson worm. And I will leave this link down there as well. Yes, the crimson worm is prepared. Yes, it's the same. It is the same story, pretty much. Um, and this is by Pastor Borgen Jensik. Yen <laughs> oh, I know what I wanted to do, too, is the high, the high priest... Um, these these garments that they use to dye um the garments of the high priest with is um it's very interesting and and Christ 
Christ being the high priest. And that is um, uh, stop screen. Okay, I'm gonna wow, I have to pop back and forth here. That's that's okay. I hope you don't mind me popping back and forth. Um, yeah, I want to go back to the Bible. Um, if we look up, let's see. It actually, the high priest, and it's, it's in Hebrews. Oh, I just want to make sure that I'm screen sharing, and that's not good enough for me. So we will go there. <clears throat> Um, it's in Hebrews, um, a Chalcedek, where, where he's, is described. Oh, what did I do? Maybe I can go backwards. No. Oh, yeah, this is it. Um, you know what? Um. There's a way to do this. And you can just search in Hebrews. Oh, here we go. Here, I'm here. <laughs> I just went, I just went um the wrong way. So I guess for every high priest is ordained and gifts, there's one, but oh yes, here's one. Here's a good one. But into the second. The second is always Christ. Um, Adam, Christ. Um, second is always um Christ. Trust me been studying but into the second went the high priest alone once every year not without blood but with which he offered for himself and for the heirs of the people and hebrews 9 11 but christ being come and high priest of good things to come by greater and more perfect uh by a greater and more perfect tabernacle not made with hands that is to say not of this building. So Christ is described as the high priest, and he will be the high priest, and it will be uh, the taper. He will be the tabernacle, not made with hands. So, um, which is very interesting. And that I, I just remembered. I wanted to bring that into the um, into this tonight because it's it's it is a reflection. The worm, the Christ, everything seems to be of of Christ. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna I'm just gonna scroll down to some of these. Um yes, made it to a live stream. Yay! <laughs> That's awesome. I hope you are enjoying this. I, I just found this amazing. The more I studied it, I the first time I studied it, I I, I took it as being it's almost like a um the red thread through through Bible. There Christ is always seen everywhere um in in scripture and this one verse definitely just just amazing uh, <laughs> picture of christ a strong seat yes we're meaning through it until it's it's a specific worm it's not it's it's a specific worm <laughs> That can only that can only do what it does on wood, uh, yeah. For three days, yeah. Once in its lifetime, covering his children, its children, with the crimson, the blood, protecting, preserving. Yes. Oh yes, yeah. I like Strong's, and don't be afraid to use um, aids. Uh, with Bible study, I I enjoy using the um, the Bible Dictionary, Strong's um, websites like this um, <clears throat> because it just it just helps. Yes, yes, Jared. Yeah, that's what I was getting at. So you don't you're not going to read that verse uh, the same anymore, are you? <laughs> Yeah, and Cliff, yes, it is very interesting. See what study does? Study does. Yeah, it's amazing. Amazing. And actually, this 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 question, this live stream, 
is a result of um, um, a, a live chat in Randy's chat because somebody had asked Randy what it meant and uh, I knew it meant much more and I just wanted to prove that it does. <laughs> Nothing against Randy. Love you, Randy. Uh, yeah, whatever. <laughs> uh, okay. Jared, it was uh, it was around in Bible times. Yeah, I think it's still around today. The crimson worm is still still around today. Today. Uh, here's another scripture. I recall a previous pastor of mine mentioning the scarlet thread. Yeah, too. Yes, the scarlet thread. It it doesn't just stop there. It just keep it keeps going and going. And you know what? There was this beautiful. The last time I was at uh, a Christian bookstore, there was this beautiful black Bible, and it had beautiful red stitching just all around it. And I was just so amazed with it. But uh, I didn't want a black one, but it was beautiful. <laughs> um. But anyway, I looked at the lady and I said, that's amazing. I said, that Bible is stitched with with red thread. And I just smiled. And she looked at me like, what? <laughs> this girl is nuts. <laughs> she didn't know what I meant. Anyway. Uh, this is one of the reasons that people have no excuse to not believe the scriptures. Just by looking into the creation of God, Abba Father, yes. Just the creation alone. Yeah. It's it's undeniable. It's undeniable. Even if you were the only human here on earth. <laughs> it's, it's just so beautiful. And you know what? There still is a lot of beauty in the world. We, and the way the world is today, we just have to enjoy it, appreciate the beauty, appreciate our health, um, the, appreciate the fact that we can read our scripture. I mean, it's just so amazing that we can. And in other countries, how how it's shunned upon or taken away from, and they have to do it in in hiding. So, yeah, we should we should be thankful. So I don't know. I guess I don't know what, where to go from here. So with that being said, you can you can see that there there are uh, deeper meanings in scripture. So. Um, Yep, keep studying. I just want to see if I left anything out, but I don't think I did. Um, yeah, what what blew me away was the the three days, the once in a lifetime, and the fact that uh, the, the wax and the white is wool, and it preserves the wood. It's just such a picture, unbelievable. And Christ being the, with the red dye, and how they use it today, <clears throat> and Christ being our high priest, and that's the color, the scarlet that they still they still use, they still use and harvest that worm. So I guess I should sum this up. Um, yes, very thankful indeed. Uh, a thread that is through the whole of Scripture. Yes, yeah, it is the this, this scarlet thread. Yeah, that's why I was amazed at that one Bible. It was just such a beautiful Bible. But I, I, I yeah, I have so many. <laughs> I, don't, I can't read them. And you know what? I still stick to my original because it's it's so worn. Um, I read Re Revelations so much and studied Revelations. It fell out. It fell out, and I just hot glued it back. I bought I bought a couple of new ones, but I just can't. I can't get myself. So. Well, I can open them up, but I don't want to hurt them. I don't know. It's almost like I don't want to hurt the scripture, but my old one is is my comfort. And I don't think I'll ever get rid of that one. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I'm not into gematria, but do you know if red shows up in the word in the word? searches for letter sequences i don't know cliff um uh, i don't know i you know what i can look into that further and maybe leave a comment after the video is done 
I could I could answer that later. <laughs> um, Word of God is always amazing and encouraging. Yes, it's good to go deep in this. Always, always, uh, always coming something interesting up. Always something. Yeah, there's always something interesting. You can always dig deeper. It's it's so it is so true. You can always dig deeper. Yeah. Countries to be able to read scriptures without being persecuted. So far, yeah. <clears throat> places in Asia persecuted every day. Yes. Yes. Yeah, and and I hope that some of the Bibles that are given to them are given to them in their language because it would be it would be even a it would be a difficult matter for them A not to have scripture and B to have it in a different language for them to struggle to read. So I, I pray that it is in their language if they ever um, are able to access scripture. Hey, Mark, you and Robert are great uh, ex expositors to the Bible. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I miss I miss doing live streams with Robert. But you know what? He's he's busy. <laughs> he is busy. But you know, uh, maybe I can encourage him just 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 not to do a topic or anything, but maybe even just to have a chat, a live chat, maybe, and to answer questions. Because um, I I enjoy questions, and if I can't answer them on the spot, I am one to search diligently and try and answer that. Um, sometimes it takes me a couple of days, but I, I do get back to people, even in comments. I, I just, I enjoy it. it. It makes me study. It just makes me study. And it's good to see you, you here, Mark. I think it, I think I gave you a wrench. So, you know, <laughs> I think I did. If not, I will, but I think, I think I did. Uh, thank you so much for the beautiful study this evening. Yes, it's 1 a.m. Yes, and it's, I'm not sure even how long I've been on here. I haven't even checked the time. It's, it's up here somewhere. Um, yes. Okay, good night. Uh, reflect on God's word. Yes, good night. Uh, it's, how long have I been on? Okay, there's the clock there. Uh, an hour and four minutes I've been here, so... Just as Jesus, Yeshua, can be found um, it, uh, Elias in Genesis one seventeen, Jared, <laughs> yeah, Mark Lester, yes, I agree, man. Um, yeah. Reference my mom uh, Thompson chain. Reference my mom gave me in seventy seven. It's still in good condition because I went to the NIV for many years. Uh, my eyes are not good to read it now. Oh, I'm going to call you Paul from now on. <laughs> Paul Cliff. <laughs> oh yeah, it happens. Hence the glasses. But getting older, yippee. <laughs> and I'm older than I look. I've been told. <laughs> so, well, actually, I, I'm yeah, I'm younger than I am. I don't know if I said that correctly, but anyway, whatever. I don't know. Ah, <laughs> uh, you, Jimmy Swagger. Oh no, don't be, don't be. No, it's not a mistake. You could probably sell that <laughs> if you wanted to. Yeah, that would be a fun keepsake. Actually, it would be. Would be. Uh, yes, thank you. Yes, and thank you for all coming because that's that's great. Equal letter distance in the Hebrew. Oh yeah, equal letter dis. Uh, that's kind of a way to decipher, isn't it? A ciphering thing, Jared. Is that what it means? Decipher. Um. And then Cliff, yeah. <laughs> well, that's it for the comments. So um, 
I don't I don't know what else to say. I'm just glad that this this there was this was able to take me to an hour because I was afraid that it would only last a half an hour. But I I I I enjoy a good hour of chat and uh yeah, oh, we got to show my uh my Chicago t-shirt again. You know what's strange in the camera? It's just backwards. It's backwards. Let's see if I do. Okay. There we go. Megfield. Oh, I look silly. Oh, uh, okay. I look silly. All right. <laughs> silly wabbit. Where's Dan? <laughs> Chuck Chuck Miss Missler mentioned that too. What did he mention? Um, the crimson worm. Oh, Jack. Sorry, I skipped you, Jack. Jack I can't stay, Val. I'm, I'm about to do a live stream with Max. Just wanted to pop in and say, God bless. Okay. Have fun with Max. <laughs> Thank you for popping in, Jack. Uh, maybe I'll see you again. Yes, snowman. I can make men out of snow. I said that once. <clears throat> and I also said, don't take that the wrong way. <laughs> Snowman. Uh should yeah, next time get your wife on. That's that's fine. That'd be good. Uh it means oh uh, what are you saying? Bunny, yeah. It means gamma tria. Gamma I'm gonna have to look it up. I am. Sorry. It's just something I have to do. Gamma trio. Okay. I'll do that. <laughs> yeah. And I guess on that note, I think I'm going to uh, to end the broad uh, to close this down now. End the broadcast because I don't know unless anybody else has a question or something. I can I can wait a minute. Messages between letters, yeah, that's like it's like a ciphering, right? Like an enigma, like kind of thing. Yeah, codes. Yeah, like the the codes Hebrews. I think Hebrews study a lot that way, and uh, there there there's some amazing ones. There are, um, yeah, Chuck Missler. I used to watch him a lot. Yeah, he was he was the first one that uh, I watched, and he had he had a video on uh, or a message on on words and what words meant in scripture. Um, I and I and I redid I redid that one in memory of Chuck Missler because that was the first. A video I saw of of him, and that captured my interest, and it also captured my interest for for the study of words because uh, they do mean things, just like the seven sayings on the cross of of Christ. They all mean something, and you know what? I might excuse me. I might eventually uh, put a video together on that. It's just that the videos take a long time. Um, I'm finding that uh, doing this in chat is a lot easier <laughs> than editing videos and stuff so Ooh. uh yes just uh jared is confirming that yeah to hebrew text and start with a certain letter and count 26 or 7 yeah etc cetera, etc cetera. yeah that's who that's what i thought yeah it was <laughs> I was just confirmed. Yeah. Uh, who was? Uh, <laughs> that's Alpha One Bay Two. Oh, okay. Interesting. So it is kind of like like a code of yeah. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. Like A for one, two, B for three. Yeah, letters and numbers mean something. It's an acquired taste. Oh, yeah. <laughs> mm, Bigfoot. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> Bob. <laughs> Uh, Chuck Missler, yeah. He's very good. He's a very fast talker, but, um, and his sermons are very long, but they're very interesting. Um, they're very interesting. 
If it wasn't for Robert, I would have never found me. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, thanks to Mark. Yeah. Yep. Mark, you, you've been around a while. Yeah, I remember chatting in the live chats with you. Yeah. And what Chuck Missler was talking about was the correct ob observations. Yeah. Yeah, he can get really intellectual too. And uh, sometimes it just, you're, I don't know, your mind can only absorb so much. <clears throat> and I think you, you, there's a comfort zone too before you start um, messing everything up. But he was a pilot too, I think Chuck, Chuck Missler was. Pilot as well, I should say. Okay, I think uh, I think I'm gonna close this down now, and I, I appreciate everybody uh, joining me. So um, I don't know what my next topic will be. Leave me ideas and comments, and actually, I find ideas too in chats. So, um, and this is where I found um, this question, and uh, it's taken me uh, a little bit more study, but I learned a lot. To just the life cycle of a crimson worm. Amazing. Oh, yes, for an example. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And I bet you it could even go further than that. Uh, the more the more you expand your your vision or your thought, I think it can expand even further. So it's 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 Eternal. It's never ending. I don't think you can ever exhaust the word. I don't think so. Oh, Chuck Mesh is part of uh, any any or nonsense. Is he? <laughs> hmm. Yeah, maybe. Anyway, I'm going to I'm going to say good night now and uh, and shut this down. So. Yes, thank you, everyone, and uh, thanks, Cliff, and everyone, um, Jared, Mark, um, Jack, uh, reflect on God's word, Rio, it was really nice to see everybody in here, and I hope anybody who watches this afterwards um, enjoys the message, and it's, like I said, it encourages, I want to encourage people to open up their scripture, study, even just simple words, it's it's very interesting. And yeah. Anyway, I think I want to hit the end broadcast now. So, good night. <laughs>